Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to be back to the UN. Uh, I left the UN 20 years ago after serving this organization for 15 years. And uh, one of the things I can tell you is that despite uh, the, uh, the time, not too many things have changed in what we call the digital transformation. Uh, I was in Geneva when the World Wide Web was invented. Uh, actually, uh, I was an uh, uh, expert in the UN working with Tim Van Slee when the web was invented. That was an historical moment. At that time, we all thought for first time the human knowledge could be decentralized from silos and be distributed to developing countries. I was very young at that time, maybe a bit naive, and I thought that this invention would change the world. So um, the web expanded. The web, as you know, started with CERN. It was uh, uh, an experiment done by physicists with the need to interconnect machines. And the original architecture of the web, and we, re we realized that very, very early because we were at the genesis, we realized something is that the human was not factored or coded into the architecture. So the web 1.0, we are now talking about the web 3.0, does not know what a human is. So we human, we don't exist in the internet revolution, we don't exist in the AI revolution, we don't exist on the blockchain revolution, we don't exist on the fourth industrial revolution altogether. We are something that the machine don't understand what we are, and I am fully aligned with uh, Mr. Mr. Professor Juster in what he just said, because the, the most complex and sophisticated algorithm the uh, Earth has ever had is the human. Or, or capability not only to process complexity over 200,000 years that we have been here, combined with uh, or emotional capability, a spiritual capability and many others, may us the most sophisticated algorithm ever. Another thing that was said this morning, I think was also by you, doctor, is that the people that are coding algorithms today, they are geeks. They have absolutely no moral obligations or even in some cases knowledge. Some of them actually the average age is 27 years old. Remember what you were when you were 27 years old. If you have to code the algorithms which are gonna power basically humanity in the next years to come. So um, one of the uh, things that I did, I left the UN uh, after serving 15 years and I created a company. I say, stop to talk, let's to act. And the only way to act in this is by resolving the original problem. A digital identity, it's not something that qualifies you as a Facebook user or Google user or national identity of a country or a bank account or a telecom subscription. That's not the definition of digital identity. A digital identity is basically the extrapolation of your human identity in the digital world. So what human identities are, are things that we control. I mean, when we born, we have a, a certificate of birth, right? Which is the original document that we all use to issue many other things, or passports, or identity cards. We have to show the birth certificate before we get anything else. We do not have a birth certificate on the internet. Humans enter the internet in a fake way, which is by becoming a consumer identity. What you get when you enter into social media or when you enter into a telco subscription or in a bank account, you are basically becoming a consumer identity. And that consumer identity does not even belong to you. That consumer identity will become, belong to the platform that they are using you that grant. Now, the United Nations has a, an international standard, which is the X509 standard, which is a digital identity standard that, that we have there for so many years, which is based in cryptographic root capability, what we call PKI, public infrastructure, that basically allows you to create cryptographic root keys, which are trusted by third trusted parties, in particular United Nations or agencies, that basically let countries to issue a identity based on that cryptographic root key. So basically the private key issues public keys, and the public keys are there and stored into devices, telephones, you can that, you pay your taxes, you can vote online. My company was the first ever pioneer with the Swiss government to do online voting in 2002. And we uh, let users, Swiss users to use a digital identity to vote. So the technology is there and is being used, but it has not been properly distributed globally. And why? 
because you have a $10 trillion economy that is making money out of this. So, so you have, well, when you say how social media companies make money, how internet platforms make money, it's basically by data mining, owning your digital identity under a permanent consent. So when you log in by default into something that issues you a digital identity today, basically what you're doing, you are giving away your consent. So if you compare that to our analog life, if you compare that to what we do in, in the day to day, it will be equivalent to invite a friend to have a dinner in your house one day, and from that day, that person will come in every day to have a dinner in your house because that consent cannot be withdrawn. So the consent that you are giving, and we all that gave already, to social media companies and companies that they are making money on digital identity makes impossible for us to withdraw that consent, which just basically cannot get back. So um, Wise Key, which means World Internet Secure Key, is a cryptography company. Basically, we have created cryptographic root keys. The, the, the cryptographic root key of Wise Key was created in cooperation of ITU and a, a Swiss foundation with the name OISTE, Organisation Internationale pour la Sécurité des Transactions Electroniques. And basically what we do is that we work with countries and we're trying to educate them about a digital identity. When a country comes to us and say, hey, I want to issue a national identity for the citizens of the country, we tell them, okay, we, you can do that, but what about if the country users own their identity? Would you be willing to give that control back to the user? And then obviously that discussion gets a bit uh, complicated, right? Because everybody wants to control everybody. That's the, that's the norm of the digital economy. Why? Because we humans become the product. When we give something on the internet, whether it's a social media, usage or you are entering into a metaverse in our days basically uh, you are the product we are the product and that's why we get the things for free because we don't realize that we are the product and with what we pay with our digital identity so there is a, absolutely essential that international organizations the united nation in particular and this forum maybe uh, as as a, as a thought leader can educate the world that if we really want to protect humans in the fourth industrial revolution, we have to create the knowledge that a digital identity is only an extrapolation of a human identity and as a consequence, it is a human right. And I'm also working with the Human Rights Commission not to make all the digital right, all the human right digital rights, that will be a long way, but at least to recognize one of them which is a digital identity, is a human identity right, and that should be protected by the legislations of countries. Today, legislation protects your data, GDPR, EIDAS in the European Union. It protects your interaction, but do not protect your identity. You won't necessarily see a country that has adopted the norm that a digital identity belongs to the user, and that what, what that will mean in practical terms. So that means that when you will basically create a cryptographic key, then you will store in your laptop, in your mobile phone, or in a USB, and put in your safe if you don't want to use it. But at least you have it, you want it. And then that will become the single sign-on of all web platforms. So no platform should be entitled not to let you go in with your key, because this identity basically is the key to open many doors, and no door and as we, just, we were very successful, and, and Thierry Breton was uh, three days ago uh, very in, in great satisfaction because the European Union has agreed on, on connecting computers and laptops with the same uh, plug, with the same, we have a standardized plug, and this is a great thing, great, we standardize plug. But what about standardized identities? What about if all our identities will be able to access everything and all the logs on the digital economy will be open to that identity? Now, when we talk about AI, I mean, there's a lot of confusion about AI. AI, I remember when cloud was sexy and everybody was using the name cloud for everything. Now people are using AI for everything. And, and soon, in a few months, maybe years, we will going to be using quantum for everything. The, the, the problem today is not in one particular technology. The, the fourth industrial revolution, and I was in 2016 with Klaus Schwab in the web when that was launched in the World Economic Forum, it is something different. The fourth industrial revolution is the convergence of technologies. Each of those technologies, blockchain, IoT, AI, quantum, neuroscience, are becoming exponentially 
uh, expandable, means that they are reaching a moment in their evolution that they, we cannot control anymore. Humans do not have anymore the uh, capability, whether it's, uh, it is uh, intellectual capability or even technical capability, to control the interactions of those technologies. That happens in the Renaissance, when the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci, and very genius at that time, realized that mathematics, architecture, design, got together to basically create a new society. But this is happening now. The, the exponentiality of technology means that they are enriching each other. AI is growing very fast because data is going very fast. Why AI was not successful 10 years ago? Because we didn't have enough data. Now we have a lot of data, but actually we have also a lot of fake data. So AI is as good as you put inside the AI. You know, if you put garbage into AI, you get garbage back from AI. So the identification is essential. We are in a society which is going to, uh, we are in the process of putting one trillion objects connected to the internet. Now, those objects don't have yet identities, which is crazy. I mean, my company, we just launched uh, a constellation of satellites. We just launched uh, 14 satellites with uh, SpaceX and a, f uh, and a startup in Spain with the name FOSA. Um, we launch satellites, and they are IoT satellites, and they are able to track real-time identity into objects. So your car, your fridge, your, your connected device, anything that connects with the internet is trackable now through the satellites. But what we are realizing is manufacturers do not put identity at the object level. They just put a SIM ID, in some cases it's a serial number, and, and, and that is so unsecure. So only now, in the last years, you're going to uh, see legislation around putting identity protection into devices. Why? Because if you don't and you hack one device, from that device you can hack the entire ecosystem. So we are entering into the era of identity. And, and it's a very big subject, because identity is not only technology, it's sovereignty, it's uh, power, it's control. And basically what the humans are not yet ready to do is to let other humans to take ownership on their destiny. We are still in a very patriarchal structure when we talk about the internet, like every a group of people just taking decisions from the rest of the humanity. The humanity has been created by maybe uh, 60, 70 million people. We, we are 8 billion people soon that can contribute to the global development by just being a voice to the next uh, industrial revolution. But for that, we need to give them the method. We need to give them the possibility of being uh, available to access the internet without any channel, without any di any filter, without any dist di di disturbances. So um, as, as we enter into what I call uh, the quantum era, in in few years, uh, we're going to have quantum computers arriving there. We are reaching singularity by the year 2030, which is actually the year that many of the sustainable development goals of the United Nations will reach maturity as well. And, and there is a disconnect. I mean, there is one of the SDG that says basically basically that every human should have a political identity before the year 2030. How far are we from that? I mean, the, how many identities do we have now? There are people in India, and I have been traveling the world with the UN and after with the private sector, they, they are totally excluded. The fact of not having a digital identity, it is a, a, a very concrete way for mafias of the world and 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 and, and human uh, slavery and trafficking to basically use the fact that people do not have an, an identity they don't exist in the in the society so i think this forum might be one of the uh, thought leaders into this i think there is a need to put process and there's a need to move in three areas one area is technology technology companies that they are making money by basically converting human into products needs to be needs to be stopped as soon as possible because of, if not we're going to reach a situation where humans are not going to be able to participate anymore into any uh, revolution if we let machines continue exponentially to grow humans will be viewed by those machines and those algorithms as a liability because we are slow because we die because we we breed and we use co2 and, and now we are basically a, 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 a factor to be eliminated in those algorithms. So in order to, to let this exponentiality grow, we need a, a, a kill switch. We need a switch, then we can stop those machines to take decisions and they will be contra, co controversial and contra the, the human evolution. And the only switch that we can take is our identity. If the machine 
checks or identity and the person says, sorry, machine, I don't want to connect to you because I don't trust you or I don't like you or, or you are not based on my moral, spiritual or any value, if we don't do that as soon as possible, we will enter into something which will look very bad. And this is what other, I mean, there are people thinking that this is already over, that we will not be able to get back. There are movements that say, hey, singularity is reaching uh, the earth. It's actually a singularity university already training people on this uh, future humanity where humans will not be there anymore. So um, just uh, provoking thoughts but they are based on a huge experience. I have been working with that all my career. And although I am always an optimist, and you need to be an optimist in order to be in front of technology, I am a pessimist, and we are so slow in solving some fundamental issues, which is basically giving every human being an identity. Thank you very much.